previously on Church Folk and Saints Series 2, Dark Times. Oh, snap. No, wait, wait, wait. It's not worth losing your job. Don't do it. Don't do it, girl. You might be new to the faith and all and friends with the beloved Philip and Rochelle, but I'm about to out you the pastor. Oh, Lord Jesus. Oh, let me get my oil. Come on, babies. Big Mom's going to anoint you. Yo, Jew, come on, man. Let's ride, man. Let's ride. No, y'all not ride nowhere. We aren't doing this. There's something brewing in the town of Acacia Grove. The storm clouds are rolling in and bringing something sinister along with it. Big Ma feels it and all the residents are starting to see it. A war is coming and it's time to prepare for battle. Man, I'm mad as hell right now. Gonna roll up on my family and send a threat to me? Yeah, I don't have no words right now. Those are my kids, man. What if something happens to them? I was the one telling them to really stop tripping and let them go outside. Nah, man, don't blame yourself, man. Those babies got every right to be outside in their own yard. Man, I'm praying we don't see them. Because I know I'm going to jail. Nah, little bro, I got this, man. This one on me, man. You got Bree and the kids to go home, too. Nah, I can't let you do that, man. If we go down, we go down together. I pray I just want to take a life tonight. Yo, hold, hold, hold up. Slow up. Yeah. Who's that up there? That's one. Yeah, pull over right here. Pull over right here. Yeah, that, yeah. Come on, man. Leave the car running, too. Yo, Tone, I heard you was looking for me. I'm here now. What's good? Man, it's me and you for real. How you gonna roll over my kids like that? Oh, wow. Big Mom's little choir boy grew up here at Balls. Check him out, Big Slim. I see. Y'all Big Mom know y'all out here trying to play with the big dog? Man, everybody trying to hear all that, man. Let's do this. Man, get him, Tone. Oh, man. Big Mom is throwing out on one. Everyone, show me your hands. Show me your hands now. Oh, yeah? You got lucky. I guess y'all big my car to police the rest of y'all little boys. Yeah. Guess since you came for action, I'm about to give you something. I said I had a bullet with your name on it, Johnny. Come on, Tone. Put that gun away. Gun, gun. Everybody down. Gun. Are you trying to get a death wish? Uh, Yo, get down, get down, get down. Oh, uh, man, I'm hit. On the ground, on the ground, everybody. On the ground now. This feel like a setup, man. And John, you bleeding. Yo, huh? Oh, damn. Man, I don't even know where to start. I still can't believe that Jonah and Julius left out the house strapped, looking for Tone and Big Slim. I mean, I get that their adrenaline was on a hundred. Mine would be too if someone came to my house while my kids were outside playing and has them deliver a threatening message to me. <sighs> but I guess I was just assuming or hoping they would listen to Big Ma. <laughs> Clearly, I was mistaken. And that dang on tone is a trip. He didn't even seem phased by the fact that Jonah rolled up on him the way that he did. He is indeed what they call a street dude. I mean, the simple fact that he pulled out a gun on Jonah while the cops were right there. Who else does that but a street dude? Oh, I forgot. Someone that is being used by Satan and doesn't even realize it. Huh. Whatever happened to the days of one-on-one -on -one street fighting? 
Not that I'm condoning fighting or any violence for that matter, but I can't stand the fact that nowadays these people out here on the street, the first thing they want to do when they get into it with someone is to shoot. And majority of the time, it's never just the intended target that's hit. It's always innocent bystanders that pay the consequence of gun violence. In this case, the intended target was hit. Who, Lord, I pray Jonah is okay. And even that tone is okay. Because firing a weapon in front of police in this climate, at this race, can definitely get you killed. Help them, Father. Oh, Lord, help him. Diamond, come in. Hey, girl. Just wanted to stop by and check on you. How are you? You good? No, I'm not. I've been traumatized by this entire incident. Well, when do you plan on returning to work? In a couple of days. I have appointments with my lawyer and a physician. I'm still having ringing in my ear. Oh, wow. She hit you that hard? Yes, she did. My cheek was swollen for two days. Hmm. Let me see. Oh. Still, actually, looks a little swollen to me. Turn your head. Oh. Well, I've been praying for the both of you. I don't know why you're wasting prayers on that heathen. She attacked me. Okay, okay, Lydia. Have they decided if she's going to be fired? Unfortunately, I won't know anything until after the internal investigation is completed. Which I don't understand since I was physically attacked and there were witnesses. You being one of them. Management is saying because I reported infractions, some of the staff is labeling me an antagonist, saying I created a hostile work environment. I have the right to report what I've witnessed without being assaulted. Well, you do know she's been suspended, right? Yeah, I know. Has anyone spoken with you yet? Yeah, they did. And I told them exactly what I saw and heard. Good. Then I know the truth was spoken. Wow, it seems their co-worker really did a number on Lydia. And did y'all peep Diamond's low-key shade? <laughs> she didn't have to call out the fact that Lydia's face is still looking a mess from that slap. Jeez. That was a hell of a slap. And it's apparent that Lydia still hasn't learned her lesson. She doesn't see that her actions brought about the dilemma that she's in. But isn't that like a lot of us? We are so quick to put the blame on others or point out all the things that someone else did to us that was wrong. But we never turn the mirror on ourselves to see how we contributed to the situation or what we did wrong in the situation. As I stated before, I don't condone violence, but you can't go around trying to get people fired and not expect any blowback. I thought that after getting slapped into next week, she would have used this time to reflect and take ownership of her part in the matter. <sighs> But Lydia is still Lydia and still has some growing to do. But she's no different than a lot of us. All of this because she wanted the promotion by any means necessary. She wants their co-worker to lose her job. <laughs> but Lydia better hope she gets to keep hers because she's not the innocent victim that she clearly thinks she is. We shall see.
But I do like how Diamond is being a good friend to Lydia, whether she recognizes it or not. Lydia has rubbed a lot of people the wrong way. But to have someone in your life that is still there for you, in spite of you, genuinely cares for you, and will also hold you accountable, those are Christ-like characteristics if you ask me. I'm really hoping Lydia gets it together. But like I said, we shall see. Since we dismissed a little early from Sunday school, good lesson, girl. Would you mind if I pose a question not related to the lesson? No problem. The floor is yours, Sister Betsy. Thank you, Philip. And I'm glad your lovely wife, Rochelle, is present. Hmm. Okay. You may proceed. Part of what I want to discuss concerns your mentee, Tiffany. Sister Betsy, this is not the time or place. You are truly out of order. So what I'm hearing is... So you know what this is about. Of course I do. Someone close the door, please. Thank you. Ooh, what's oh, going on here? What is happening? Here oh, this is about to be messy. Order, order, order. order. Let's hear Sister Betsy out, shall we? The floor is yours again, Sister Betsy. Remembering that this is the Lord's house and his people. So let's conduct ourselves accordingly. Sister Betsy? Thank you. I want to ask the board and pastor how you can allow people like Tiffany and Mimi to join the church and participate in this mm -hmm. ministry. I knew it was about to be messy. She is always trying to stir things up. It's an abomination to the word of God. Mm -hmm. The whole abomination. You heard me well. I'd like to know too. Order, order, order. Order. I'll take it from here, Philip. Thank you for being diplomatic and orderly. Sister Betsy, first, let me say that you do have a right to know where I stand with regards to the LGBTQ plus community. However, before I do that, let me say that you, my dear sister, are operating in a spirit of discord. The problem isn't what you asked as much as of how and when you asked it. You see, Satan is very clever when trying to bring about division in the house. He will fill you with righteous indignation and send you out on a wild witch hunt, forgetting that Jesus is love. He is a friend to the spiritually sick. Even Jesus' disciples were spiritually flawed, but he used them in his ministry anyway. Teach, yeah. Pastor. Teach, Pastor. Teach, Pastor. Come, Come on. on. Come on. Break Jesus, it down. Jesus, Lord, it's not gay. Mm -mm. With all due respect, Pastor, and a little bit of disrespect, Mm -hmm. Homosexuality oh. is a big sin. It's an abomination. Mm -hmm. Period. Mm -hmm. There, there are, are no big or little, little sins. sins. Come on now. That's right. Who told? What Bible is she reading from? The King James. Sister Betsy, James two ten says, "If you have committed one sin, you are guilty of all." Because whether I tell a lie, steal, or murder someone, they all defy God. And we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of the Lord. And that's Romans 3.23. Therefore, my job is to love all God's people, to direct the flock he has entrusted to me in the word of truth to gently correct and hold accountable, as I'm trying to do with you right now, knowing that whatever change needs to be made in their lives 
God will bring about. His perfect will for the lives of those who belong to him will be done. I've said all that I can say. I bet. Mm -hmm. At this time. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' name. Amen. That's my thing. Amen. Dang on sister Betsy, going to mess around and end up like Lydia. She is definitely operating in the spirit of confusion, hatred, and some more. Now, I've already said my piece about how some Christians, not all, but some, treat gay Christians in the church. I'm not going to repeat all that here. If you missed that episode, go back to episode five and listen. What I want to talk about is Sister Betsy's approach and attitude. You don't have to be a Christian or a regular churchgoer to know that how she handled this situation was out of order. I'd like to introduce you to the spirit of confusion that has Sister Betsy bound. The spirit of confusion loves to keep mess going and stirring things up. It's M.O., is to keep you focused on the mess and not the messenger and to have you bickering and not fellowshipping. God tells us in his word that he is not the author of confusion, but of peace. So I would say, if you have a lot of confusion going on in your church, in your home or on your job, check the source or sources because it's definitely not from God. I think Pastor handled the situation well. He did better than I would have, that's for sure. Hmm. He didn't match her energy or spirit, I should say. He addressed her and anyone else in the congregation that may have felt like her. And he did so calmly with the word of God and in the love of Christ. I pray that put that spirit to flight. But I have a feeling the spirit of confusion has its talents deep in Sister Betsy. Whew, but I pray I'm wrong. This concludes this week's episode of Church Folk and Saints, Series 2, Dark Times. I hope you enjoyed it, but more importantly, I pray you got something from it. Make sure you are following us on our social media platforms. And please, if you like what we are doing, drop us a comment and let us know. Encouragement goes a long way. Also, Share us with your family, friends, co-workers, church family, and even your enemies. You never know. It could change their life. Hope you'll join us for the next episode. It's going to be good.